Do it to me one more time. No, this is never Three, enough. Ow. 34. Yes. All right. Kevin, you want a little bit of this? No. Kevin, you want a little bit? No. No? Oh, yeah. Oh, is, is the whole one sticking up pretty good? Mm-hmm. Okay, do it again. Ah, again. Yes, and again. And again. All right. Okay. All right. I got it out. All right. That was a little bit unorthodox. But we don't care. I don't care. I don't have to answer anybody. I don't have a nine to five job, so I don't really care. I'm self employed, and I don't, you know, have to, ha- have to answer anybody. Have a seat. Well, uh, Kevin, oh. are you too embarrassed to come back on here? No, no, I'm fine. Did you get a good shot of that camera? It was a good shot. Okay. Smack me, smack me, and I can't know nice. tomorrow. Okay, that, that, that felt pretty good. It's nice seeing how you have to have lips. Okay. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I, uh, I was uh, in the sex industry myself. Was it? Were you? Yeah. In fact, I was a. Uh, I used to be a pimp. Did you? Were you? And this guy uh, I was, uh, in New York, he was my best client. Was it? His name is uh, Hugh Grant. Ah! <laughs> there I am right there. Gotcha. <laughs> Hugh Grant. Yes, all right. Okay. <laughs> so you were, you were the auctioneer, right? Yes. <laughs> You're auctioning off. Okay. Okay. That was very therapeutic. That was really good. I thoroughly enjoyed it because, now, you know, you business people out there, you businessmen that work the nine to five job, attorneys, Doctors, you know, you don't want to admit it, but you know that there are fetishes out there. Sex does sell. And God forbid if, uh, you know, we talk about this on TV, you know, it's, it's one of those things that uh, we just, it doesn't make any sense. And God forbid all these Bible people, Bible Belt, conservative people hear about fetishes and all that. Do you have a mic? Go ahead. You got a mic? You got a mic. Everybody's got a mic. Ah, yes. And when are you going to start making the sound with the bag? <laughs> well, it's all right. It's quite all right. It's quite all right. It's one of those things. Now, maybe Wayne, tell us, uh, give us your bio. Do you have a bio? Do you want to get into what you've done? Or you want to talk about your, can you talk about your CD you got going out? Um, I have a recording contract, but it's in the beginning phases. We've recorded two songs, and we're actually working on three more. Right. And possibly next month we might have enough material to do some stuff on your show. There you go. Hey. What type of music do you uh, like? Um, a rock and roll type variety. or I folk have, music? Right now I have a hip-hop song. I have a rap rock song. I have an R&B kind of song. Um, and then I have one that I sing. Um, so it's it's a kind of eclectic type of yeah. variety, but it gives me an opportunity to reach a broader market by right. not excluding different kinds of music. Right. There you go. Well, when was the building day? But when you get when you you know when, before you know it, you know it'll be turning on the uh, local local you know, maybe dial the radio station and be hearing your voice. You know, it works out. And of course, you know I have my Christmas CD. Out. You know, it's it's Merry Merry Christmas with more. Of gorgeous George, you know, and it's it's wonderful for you ladies out there because when you put your hand on the woofers and you feel it, you go, oh, and I you go, oh, and you go, oh, and I go, oh, and you see what I'm doing is I'm blowing my sound out of the mic, you see, and you you've got your anus on the speaker mm-hmm. and it's blowing your dress up, and you know it's a wonderful feeling to feel that, you know, to feel the the, the, the sound out of, my, out of my mouth, you know, and then it excites you. And it excites everybody. Kevin, does it excite you? No. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not supposed to. I'm glad you're not supposed to. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not the it. target audience. Okay. I'm not the target audience. Okay. Now, if you were, um, uh, if, if, <laughs> if you were that, uh, that that sexy chick on the cable TV, Kathy Griffin, man. Oh. I, I, oh, that would make me excited. Yes. <laughs> that well, plastic surgery and you know, taking this. I don't know. I mean, like a sad. Drive me the world. Hell, you know, excitement, you know, everybody gets excited. You know, I mean, hell, I'm 38 years old. I don't need Viagra. I, you know, I do good, you know, and, and Schmecker back there taught me a few things, you know, and so, I mean, Schmecker, ever took, Schmecker's man. In fact, if you ever took Viagra, you'd probably get taller. Yeah. <laughs> and if I get, get, if that, get a stiff neck. Oh, right? yeah, it gets caught in your throat. Yeah, yeah. You know, it gets <laughs> like a little, little, you know, Adam's apple will pop, you know, pop out. A little yeah. ball can make Adam, Adam's apple there, but... Uh, Anyway, this is one of those things. But anyway, we want to get into, we got a little funny games going on. I want to talk about the Democrats taking over the Senate and taking over the, taking over the House. It's a beautiful thing. And you know what? Ironically, it was all based on Virginia. Can you believe it? I mean, Virginia I, was the swing state. Virginia was the swing state. Who would have ever thunked it? But I guess saying the word macaque a little too many times, macaque, 
it kind of just, you know, yeah, mukaka. Let mukaka. me tell you, I gotta tell you something. I gotta tell you something. About, a group dish, by the there's way. this guy in Virginia. I don't know his name. I think it's Makaka. Yeah. He's this guy that was working for Jim Webb. Right. And he was insulted by George Allen. I think you probably heard of this guy. Well, every Democrat in America should send this guy a thank you letter or a, a box of chocolates or something for uh, enabling uh, the Democrats because because the boneheadedness of uh, George Allen allowed. Uh, allowed uh, the, the, him to concede the election because of that, that well, nonsensical statement. We, 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 no, but also too, and you even mentioned this on the other show that you know that basically that Jim Webb was working under the Reagan administration anyway. So he already had the swing votes already, you know. So basically, you look at part that, and of course, you know, I mean, come on, I mean, yeah, that did obviously help, but you know, a a a throughout the United States, the red states came across the red states, unbelievably, came across and said, hey, it's time for a change. It's time to get the hell out of Iraq. It's time to make the change. It's the stepping right and stepping stone to make Bush a lame duck president. It's overkill, it's overdue, and it's about time. And this is the first steps in making that done. I believe it. We need to get Bush out of there. We need to get a President Dick Cheney out of there. Because we know Shadow that he's, we know he's running, the, you know, running the, you know, and, and him with his, with his NRA gun nuts going out there shooting his buddy up, <laughs> you know, whatever up, you know, I mean, what's up with that? Well, you know, it's, it's come to light in the last couple of weeks that um, that the older George Bush, the or Bush 41 as they call, and there's Bush 43. Bush 41 is now t uh, after losing, he goes, look at all the look at all the good work we did. Not going to do it. And, and now he's actually taken his son to task. He says, you know why I didn't invade Iraq? This is why I didn't invade Iraq. And, 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 and I lo you lost the, uh, the Senate and the Congress as a result. Uh, he, he told Bush to clear out all his people out, or all the, I guess, uh, Reaganites or, um, uh, or, or Fordites. And, uh, and now they're installing guys like Gates. And they're installing guys like uh, Brent Scrocroft and Jim Baker is back. It's the Bush White, the first Bush White House back again. Is that right? In other words, he's, you know, this is, uh, John, you imagine John Adams doing this to John Quincy Adams? I don't think so. Without Colin Powell, <laughs> he's going to be Colin Powell had it with that crap. You know, well, Colin Powell? He resigned this. Yeah. You know, had, definitely had to resign. But, you know, you look at it for what it is, you know, and then Reagan, well, well, now, you know, when I had the Alzheimer's, you know, well, Nancy was feeding me that baby Gerber food so I could poop better. Well, <laughs> well, Nancy, let me smoke some ganja. Well, anyway, so, I mean, you know, didn't we, we talked about that. It didn't help, you know, it definitely didn't help, but anyway. Uh, Mayor Blaine, do you have some comments to make about this? Do you have, okay, do, is there a mic coming up? Yeah. And up here, just, just. I, I think it was kind of interesting. My mom called me from uh, Prince William County, which is one of the, uh, the counties that they were last counting, and right. she was like, what's going on? And I said, well, I don't know a lot about the candidates, but I do know that right now the Republicans and the Democrats are both fighting for control of the House and Senate. And I was like, the Republicans are the people that did the war and stuff like that, and the Democrats are the people that are liberal. They're you know, okay with things like strip clubs, which my mother was a stripper and sold costumes and stuff like that. So my mom was like, okay, I'm going to vote Democrat. Well, funny, it was one of the last places that were actually counted. And she told her husband to vote Democrat, too. Right. So. Well, I, I, I actually know a little bit about strip clubs, and I think, I don't think, uh, let me just, <laughs> I want to look dignified on her. <laughs> anyway, I think that, um, I think that uh, most people who go to strip clubs are Republicans because they uh, that most of my Democrat friends can't afford them. They're so expensive. Right. So, yeah. They can't afford. Them Unless you're a moderate them. Democrat, then you know, like I said, you know, yeah. you, you can. But they don't admit Democrat. to it. <laughs> well, you know, it's huh. a case of us, right? It's one of those things. I mean, well, come on. Now, I mean. Unless you're an ogre or you just haven't been around, I mean, everybody's been to a strip club. I mean, come on. I've been I frequent strip clubs. I used to do it a lot. And of course, you know, that pretty much got me in trouble on the West Coast. But nevertheless, low, uh, it is what it is. I mean, you got to be, you know, it's, you know, men are like dogs, women are like cats. Men want to protect women, you know, I mean, they're going to do their thing and they're going to be independent. You know, they, they don't want to be honed down when the dog wants all the attention. Look at me. Play with me, you know. So it's just one of those things. It's 
Sigmund Freud compares the dog and the cat, the woman and the man. And wow. it's the same comparison. I didn't know you were a Freudian. Yeah. I didn't know you were a strict Freudian. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I, after the Freudian slip, you know. I mean, <laughs> Freud. The Freudian slip or maybe the uh, ah, slip, you know. Freud. Freudian. Yes. <laughs> yes. Anyway, but that's one of those things. I, I mean, I, I, uh, I know that I know that you said that men are like dogs. Let me tell you something. You sleep like with dogs, you wake up with fleas. What? That's what I was always told. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, this is one of those things. Now, but like I said, I mean, I, I'm I'm so excited. I just can't hide it. I mean, it's way overdue. It's way time. It's way past time. I thought like. Once again, and I'm going to ask you both the same question. Yeah. Do you think that in 2004 that it, we would have, you know, knew the mistake that we made in 2000? Of course, you know it wasn't a mistake. It was a bought election in 2000. You know that. But in 2004, you think, look, you know, it was a bought election. Let's make it over. Let's go ahead and make sure that we get this guy out on his case. We we'll make sure he's out with the wind. But no, the scare tactic that wind. There's enough wind on this show. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they made, you know, when, Dick, when Dick was Cheney was in his uh, thing talking with, uh, with uh, the Edwards, well, yeah, no, <laughs> in the debate, the presidential, the vice presidential yeah. debate, talking with uh, John Edwards, and going about saying, well, don't you, we don't think that we could be secure and be secure from terrorists if you, you and your uh, person, uh, if Terry, was in there running this country. And then, of course, Edwards came back right at him and said, look. You know, I resent that. This country, this country resents that. You know, where does I mean, where does it stop? I mean, the Republican Party is notorious for being hypocrites. I mean, they attacked Clinton back in the '90s about this extramarital affairs, and Larry Flint himself came out and said, "Aha, you're going to pass judgment on our president. Let me expose some of the Republicans out there." Like Trent and other people got, you know, well, next he, he, uh, also it turned Trent. out that so, new Ted was fooling around and yeah. divorced his wife. This yeah. is while he was telling Clinton. There's another guy called Bob Barr who's uh, who's in the Borat movie. Uh, yeah, there's a guy called Bob Barr, Bar, uh, Bob Barr, and he's the con he was former congressman from uh, from Georgia, and he uh, actually uh, was a very anti-abortion guy. He found out that uh, that he paid for his girl, his mistress's abortion, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I guess it's, abortion's not good for uh, for other people, but uh, as far as he was concerned, personally, it was fine. <laughs> right. Well, there you go. I mean, what so you know, hypocrisy at its best. That's really that's the Republican Party as a whole. Hey, it's obvious. You know, I. Yeah, it's no secret how I stand on this. I mean, we as a country uh, you know, have, come, have come now and made, uh, have de made a demand. It's time for a change. And hopefully this in 2006 will carry on to 2008 and we can get a person from the other side in, well, from the Democrat Party in there as president for the Democrat Party. Now, you know I'd love to see Hillary, but I don't think it's going to happen. How about John Edwards? Uh, perhaps... And I'm saying, why not Al Gore? I, I understand that, you know, and he's not going to, but you said to me that you thought that Al Gore would be. What a wonderful movie he made. I mean, yeah. It was so, so it was a two hour start. commercial for him. There's also, uh, uh, of course, Carrie might come and back. Howard Dean, you know? Howard, Howard Dean's Dean. back, you know? Yes, Howard Dean! Yeah! Yeah! That's yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 we're going to go to the White <laughs> But then you have the Republicans. The Republicans have uh, 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 John McCain, and they have uh, yeah. Rudolph Giuliani, and uh, who knows? Mark Warner is not going to make it for the uh, Mark Warner is not going to make it for the Democrats, and no, as it turns out, neither is George Allen. <laughs> no, <laughs> is that right? I'm shocked. Yes, totally shocked about that. How about that independent candidate we had two weeks ago, George W. Valentine? George W. Valentine. George W. Valentine. Yeah, the candidate yeah. kind of we had, you know? Let's go to the videotape. Yeah, I wish we had. Oh, I, but where is it? <laughs> but I want to ask you both the same question. Why do you think it's taken an extra two years for America to see, to see? Kevin and we'll do it for Nibbling. Well, it always, takes, it always takes a while because what happens is, I mean, every, the party gets its place to shine. I find it's, it's actually easy for the Democrats to come in now because the Republicans have made a shambles of everything. Right. You give the Democrats the, the reins of power, you know, they might get a lot done, but at the same time, uh, then the Republicans get to sit on their soap, uh, stand on their soapbox. But why did it take an extra two, two years long? I mean, I'm just trying to... Well, I think...